okay so I'm back so uh, where did we stop so I showed you the BIOS so this is the code for the BIOS and so the BIOS is not ready yet uh, and uh, most of the basic functions like inputs and outputs are done but they're really basic but I also want you to start on a uh, file manager uh, I want to write my own operating system for this uh, computer I don't want to port any other operating system because I don't know much about operating systems and I want to learn and I have the Minix uh, operating system uh, design book here I will not copy it but I will learn from it and then I'll write my own so the next step really is just writing the file manager and this is uh, this will be inside the kernel so here I have started writing it uh, it's, it's not really it's just a menu uh, so uh, I will start working on the file manager so it will be a tree like structure etc okay so I want to show you the computer working right now uh, and so let me turn the computer on so right here next to me I will turn the power on and let me open the so the computer is connected to uh, the serial port uh, to my PC here and so if I open the serial monitor here on, on putty, putty uh, we can see what will happen so I will take the computer out of reset and so when it's out of reset starts initializing the BIOS so it says etc BIOS version 1.0 and then it starts the post uh, testing power on self test and test the, test the RAM see if the RAM is alright and then it calculates the total RAM and mind you this number is in hexadecimal uh, it's not possible to print decimal numbers yet uh, because I have not written that routine yet it's not difficult to do because the, the CPU has a multiply so it has a divide instruction so it's uh, I just have not done it yet then it tests the registers uh, the general registers and the flags uh, it's not a complete post of course uh, it's just the beginning and so then it uh, shows displays the data and the data is coming from the real-time clock uh, which has a battery backup so it works uh, when the computer is off and so the BIOS then gives you some options what you can do uh, so right now there are not many options available so the option 0 is to load a hex file uh, it's an Intel hex uh, string option 1 is to call an address so you just type 1 and you enter the address and then you jump to the address and do a call number two is examine memory uh, number three is set date time and number four is print date time and number five is boot the kernel but of course it does not do that yet so let's try some options here first of all let's try number two uh, let's check out uh, 0000 and so that's just a hex display and of course I have not uh, added the ASCII uh, table I will though so you can try for example check out at 8000 which is the start of RAM everything is zero we can check 1000 which is the start of the BIOS code so we have some stuff there uh, so we can print the dates and time again and now if we press zero it asks for the address so let's enter 8000 hex and enter and then it asks, asks you for a string uh, so it's just a machine code in hexadecimal and all strings so let's just type a, -A, -A, -A. press enter and now it loads that into 8000 so let's check it out 8000 and if we check the a, -A, -A is all there okay so I have written a program uh, for us to try here so if we check here this program uh, will multiply two numbers together just a simple program uh, and let's I have compiled this program already I'm using uh, uh, TASM TASM to compile this it, it's called the uh, tele, telemark I think telemark assembler uh, it's not the uh, Bordland uh, turbo assemblers it's something else you can write your own table of opcodes and it will assemble your code for you so let's copy this hex string here which is the program let's go back here and reload so zero uh, so we click with the mouse it pastes the string we press enter uh, 
Sorry about that, I had a technical issue here. Uh, okay, so let's continue. So we press 0 uh, to load the hex uh, string. So we enter the address, so 8000, which is the beginning of RAM. And so let's go back here and we copy the, uh, let me copy the string here. Uh, you see, this is the entire string, right? So that's the hex, Intel hex. Uh, string which is in ASCII form uh, so yeah so this is ASCII it's not binary right so we just come here in the terminal and we click with the mouse and paste the opcode and then we press enter so that loads the string the program it's a program so loads the program into 8000 hex so let's check that it, that's that was loaded correctly so it starts with D2 so you see here it starts with D2 and it ends with uh, 0 d 0 0 so we look here 0 d 0 0 so that's the program so now we can call the program and <coughs> can call the program by pressing 1 so we enter the origin address for the program which is at 8000 and we press enter so that runs the program so the program is, will ask for a number so enter first number so let's say enter 0010 zero, zero, zero. Uh, it multiplies 8 bit numbers in this case so what I have entered is a 16 uh, bit number which is what my function requires right now uh, it's not a general function, in integer input function you have to type 4 letters and enter a 16 bit number so we enter the first number press enter enter second number let's say 0010 zero, zero, zero again and we press enter and it shows the result is 0, 1, 0, 0 which is uh, 100 in hex which is correct 10 times 10 is 100 in hex so we can try it again let's say we call 8000 again enter the first number let's enter 0, 0, 0055 hex enter let's go 0, 0, 0077 hex and the result is 2783 hex so that's just a simple multiplication program so what this is illustrates is that uh, you can enter the program here and call it from the terminal. So if we look at the assembly for this program, this is what it is. So this is not necessary, it's just to illustrate that the CPU is able to create stack frames with a base pointer and the stack pointer. And then here we input the first integer. So this is a print string function. Uh, then we input the integer uh, we save the integer on the stack uh, and then we just uh, output a new line and then we get the second number we retrieve the first number and then we multiply so this uses the multiply instruction to multiply the low halves of the registers A and B and then we display the results so this is the assembly uh, program for this and this is the machine code so that's basically it right now that's what the computer is doing there's still a lot of work to do of course and like I said I want you to write the operating system uh, and by the way uh, the computer is also connected to telnet so it's connected to the internet and you can access it from home uh, if you want so if you look here on this program there is a COM port uh, uh, component here so I can talk to the CPU from here also and there's a telnet server for it so if I close this guy here the serial port and then I come here and I open this serial port through here and then I come here and I open the telnet server now the telnet server is running and we can go here and I have registered this domain uh, online today I don't think it's running yet but we can try let's see let's try to open ah, okay so it seems to be working right now so uh, so this is the telnet server if you go on, uh, on your computer and you telnet to this address which I'll give you again in a moment you will come here uh, and here if I reset the CPU again uh, 
uh, yeah so I reset the CPU again and this is what it's sending so this is through the internet now it's not the serial port so if you do this at home you, you will see the same you will not see the postcode because this only shows when the CPU is reset but if you remember the menu the options from 0 to 5 uh, you can play with the CPU and you can uh, uh, write your own programs except you don't know the instruction set but uh, I can I will share the instruction sets uh, soon so if you do that you can do the exact same so we can press 1 and call the program from here uh, yeah okay so the telnet sometimes uh, it doesn't work properly because uh, it sends extra stuff let me check here um, yeah so I have to check the telnet server it was working a while ago uh, now some seems it's like it's not uh, working properly but I will have a look at that so I think no if I'm sorry it's because I reset the CPU that's why it, it didn't execute the program uh, correctly when I reset the CPU the RAM is reset so the program that we typed earlier disappeared so yeah it's working fine uh, so you can do this at home uh, the address that you have to telnet2 is uh, this one so it's sol.uk.ms and that's on port 51515 so if you do that you will connect to the CPU uh, if the uh, if the, the, the server is open because sometimes I'm asleep and I don't leave it uh, on uh, so if it's on you will be able to uh, play with the CPU uh, so that's it for now uh, I hope you have enjoyed the video and I will make more videos in the future uh, thank you very much for watching